Good evening. I'm Nancy Grace. I want to thank you for being with us. Bombshell tonight. Jody Arias, cold-blooded slaughter of love is Travis lover Travis Alexander after an all-day sex marathon. Stabs him 29 times, shoots him in the head, leaves him slumped over dead in a shower stall. Why? Because he's taking another woman on vacation. Bombshell tonight. In the last hours, Jody Arias busted, slamming a female jail warden with a sex slur. As it comes to light, a male juror with a crush on Arias blocks the death penalty. And with us live tonight in his very first primetime exclusive, you know him well, crack prosecutor Juan Martinez. And tonight is the eve. His blockbuster book, Conviction, the untold story of putting Jody Arias behind bars, hits the stands tomorrow morning. He's got all the details the jury never hears, including an emergency bikini shopping trip post-murder and picking up a brand new man on the flight home from Travis's memorial. Mr. Martinez, we've waited a long time to talk to you. And can I tell you, our email box is, has been being blasted Ever since last week, when we found out you could join us in our Manhattan studios, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. If you had to put it all in one word, what was your feeling when the Jody Arias trial was done? I'm satisfied. Satisfied. I was satisfied that it was done. I had done um, what needed to be done. And put her in prison. You know, a lot of people believe that prosecutors feel jubilation, elation. They go out and party when you get a conviction. I never found it that way. I just always felt relieved, like, oh, okay, one down, 500 to go. That's absolutely it. You can't uh, live in the past. You have to live in the present or the future. Other than that, you won't get anything done. You know, this latest, uh, and, and, and Liz, w somebody tell me, I want to hear the very latest of uh, Jody Arias is now slamming Juan Martinez going out with his book. And I, I fully believe she's taken to Facebook with whoever her minions are that do her bidding, trashing him for writing this book. And, oh, here we go, reality check in order as Juan, I didn't know you were on a first name basis, begins peddling his book, making appearances, patting himself on the back for a job well done. Okay, thanks Jody Arias. Hypocrisy bugs. Wish we could shine a spotlight on all of Juan's lies, made on record over the years in a court of law. Well, the reality is that all of, anything you've ever said in court is a public record. That's correct. A anything you've ever done. But I, w I don't want to talk about her hashtags because she will text and Facebook uh, uh, till the cows come home. I want to talk about your book. It's awesome. Conviction. The story of putting Jody Arias behind bars. Uh, I found out so much in here. During the trial, we would say, why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? First of all, she's calling a female warden I, I can't say it on TV, a C-O-C-K blocker. I've been told I couldn't say the two words put together. And she says she had no idea that C-O-C-K blocker was a sex term. Can you see your monitor? Do you see Jody Arias right there, one of her many, many nude shots? And take a listen to Jody Arias on her sex tape. I was totally tired and I was asleep. And I would have been completely content just cuddling with you once we got into bed, but <laughs> you had another agenda. But I don't mind receiving while you're doing the giving. I felt like I was the goddess. <laughs> and so aside from all those warm, fuzzy feelings, but like it was, it was so sexy and it was so hot and oh gosh. Because I touched it yourself. I am already. Um. <laughs> So, knowing what you know, what do you make of her assertion? She's been in, put in virtual isolation because of slamming a female warden with a sex slur. But she said she didn't know it was sexual. Well, that's what she says, isn't it? She said a lot of things during the trial, and that's the problem with dealing with her. Whatever she says, it always has to meet uh, her criteria. Uh, so, what she says doesn't really mean much because sometimes... Uh, or most of the time she has a, a, the problem 
with uh, the truth, as, as we saw in the trial. Why do you believe that she isolated you? Uh, you were the subject of all, so not all, because I got the heat a couple of times. You were the subject of all of her hate, all of her ire, and never dawned on her she had anything to do with it. That's right. I was the person that actually was holding her accountable. It didn't seem that in her past that m many people had held her accountable for what she had done. And so it appeared that I was probably the first person that had uh, uh, actually brought her deeds out to light so that we could discuss them. You know, you talked about an emergency bikini shopping trip. To, was this right after she murders Travis Alexander? Which is, it, it was like a slaughterhouse, that crime scene. Tell me about the bikini shopping trip. The trip that she actually took to buy the bikinis was after she attended his memorial service. Ah. On the way home from Sacramento, she actually stopped to buy the uh, bikinis. It was actually late for uh, her to attend uh, a dinner at her sister's house. So let me understand this. Everyone with me is Juan Martinez, the author of Conviction, the untold story of putting Jody Arias behind bars. As you know, he went it alone, solo, prosecuting a death penalty case, extremely difficult to do. He did it. He had a trusty investigator with him, but long story short, he single-handedly brought Jody Arias to justice. You know, uh, did the jury ever hear about the bikini shopping trip? No, they didn't. Uh, it really didn't have anything to do with the killing. This happened afterwards. It may have spoken to her Come state on, of mind. Come on, okay, see, my, my theory was put it all in and let the jury decide what they think is relevant or not relevant. And the fact that she murders him brutally, I mean, those crime scene photos, Liz, show me the crime scene photos, please. The crime scene photos, so many times I would have to actually turn away. This is Travis's blood in the bottom of the shower. His bathroom, uh, the, the, the one that bothered me the most was not his body, actually. It was the photo of the blood drops at the bathroom On the sink. sink, the vanity. Because by the formation of the drops, as you pointed out in court so dramatically, he came out of the shower or he was stabbed and he looks at himself in the mirror and he's bleeding downward and he sees himself dying. And he that sees the person the who's killing him also. Exactly. In the, in the reflection of the mirror. And then she goes to the memorial dressed all sexy and then goes out bikini shopping. To me, that all goes to frame of mind. Well, but it's frame of mind after the killing. So um, I didn't want to create any issues uh, on appeal. I didn't want anybody to say, well, uh, Juan Martinez had been unfair in his presentation. Well, they said that anyway. And they'll continue to say that. So. <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> so, but I wanted, uh, from a court of appeals perspective, I didn't want them to think that somehow I had been unfair. So I actually watched what I did. And I made sure that I gave her you the know most. You know what? You're so, so much better of a prosecutor than I was. Oh, I mean, I, I just so. <laughs> put it all in if I could and let them work it out in the appellate yeah. division. So that's why the bikini shopping trip never came in. You right, were worried right, about right. that on appeal. Now, right. what uh, we've read a lot about a male juror having somewhat of a crush on Jody Arias. I don't know anything about that. I've, I've also read the story, and I think it came from one of the other jurors, but I really don't know anything about it. Um, I don't even know who it is. Yeah, uh, it was a male juror apparently that has been talking to other jurors. Everybody, there is another story. Juan Martinez kept a secret for over four years. But listen to this. It's hard not to get sucked into someone so attractive, seemingly so defenseless, crying, her nose running. Yeah, that was all a big lie. In fact, that was at least the third scenario that she had told about the brutal murder of her lover, Travis Alexander, stabbing him 29 times, shooting him in the head because after an all-day sex marathon, she finds out, He's still taking his girlfriend on her trip to Cancun. And she blows a gasket and kills him.
but it was very well planned. With me right now, the man you've all wanted to talk to, and thank you for your emails. I'm going to try to get to those questions. Juan Martinez is with us on the eve. His book hits the stands, and it is Conviction, the untold story of putting Jody Arias behind bars. From the man that went solo trying this death penalty case, Juan Martinez. Again, thank you for being with us. I've got so many questions. I'm just going to fire them rapid fire at you. Okay. So let's start with the Digicam, the Digi camera. The now, how did that happen? She was actually taking all these sex pictures and inadvertently took crime scene photos. Well, the um, camera actually took three inadvertent photographs, and uh, she did have the frame of mind to go ahead and delete them but she didn't take the camera with her. Oh wait, her. here's one right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Liz, hold that please. This is in so much more detail. This, these photos in your book are in so much more detail than the ones I saw in the courtroom. Now this is Travis's body and what is, is that her, that's her foot and her leg. Wait a minute, I've never seen it in that detail. Holy smoke. So how did that happen, Juan? Well, she, in this one, uh, it, it, it appears that she dropped the camera as she was lifting his arm to drag him down I the hate it hall. when that happens, right. right when you're trying to get rid of a dead body, too. Yeah. And you see the blood uh, as he's bleeding out. If we now remember what she said at her sentencing, that he was still alive when this uh, cutting of the uh, throat okay, took place. Okay, wait, I didn't know that. That's what she said at the time so of sentencing. in this photo, a new memory. he was still alive. Right. It's a new memory for her. Oh, oh, you know what? That actually makes my chest hurt. Now, when, when did you, going into this, you didn't realize, I don't think, that you had the Digicam photos. When did you find out that she had actually taken inadvertent pictures of the crime scene? Well, we had them before I actually charged her. Uh -huh. That was the reason that I ended up charging her. Okay. Because without them, we really couldn't put her there on That's June what 4th. it was. Really? So, right, because uh, with regard to biological substances such as blood, you don't know when they were left behind. I mean, you can't date blood, you can't date a fingerprint. So the camera itself showed us, or showed me, that on the date that he was killed, she was there. Everyone joining us is Juan Martinez. We are talking about all the facts and evidence in his new book, Conviction, Untold Story, Putting Jody Aries Behind Bars, that we now know that the jury never heard. Not that I remember. I don't remember that part. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. Your memory issues. Talking about those, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What a night. Joining us here in our Manhattan studios, the man we've all wanted to talk to, but we couldn't. Juan Martinez is with us on the eve his blockbuster hit makes the stands conviction the untold story of putting jody arias behind bars including so many details true details this jury never knew um one i want to talk about the secret that you kept for four years you're talking about the gas can yeah and um it's something that i came across and uh, i realized that uh, as part of her trip to mesa she actually planned to use three gas cans so that she wouldn't have to fill up in uh, Arizona and so that. Uh, okay, hold on. Hold that picture right there. And the significance to uh, us on the outside looking in is that Jody Arias ultimately ended with a defense that she was under attack by her lover, Travis Alexander, that he had been abusing her, beating her. But Juan Martinez digs up in documents deep in thousands of documents, evidence, evidence that she had borrowed two gas cans, filled them up with gas before she went on her trip to see Travis Alexander to obscure, hide her trip. Why was that so critical, Juan? Because it shows that she was planning the trip, that it wasn't spur of the moment. Additionally, on the trip, to make sure that she had more than enough gas, she actually stopped at a store and bought a third gas can. And so it was in a receipt that she just happened to have. Uh, it didn't indicate that it was a gas can. It indicated something else. But uh, in checking, that's what it turned out to How be. How did you go through Walmart records to prove that was a third gas can? And why did you suspect 
Did you think, did you count it out and compare the miles and realize you couldn't do it on a tank of gas and two gas cans? Right, that's what I did. And so I believed that there was another wow. gas can out there. And so I you found just it. believed it and you found it. How did you get that information from Walmart? Because it was not on the receipt. Well, on the receipt, it indicated it was something like Carol, K E R O, carb. It didn't indicate that it was a gas can. So I called them up and asked them, what is this item? I also asked them, what were the other items, too? So they were able to tell me, oh, no, what that is. What were the can. other items? Uh, something for her face, something like that. So you went through all that to prove she filled up her tank right. and she filled up three gas cans of gas to travel in secret. In other words, she wouldn't have to stop for gas. She right. wouldn't be spotted. She wouldn't turn up on surveillance video, nothing. And how many miles of desert did she cross in secret to get to Travis and murder him? Approximately 400 miles. You know, one thing I've always wanted to ask you, and of course I'd see you in court, but I knew I couldn't speak to you or the defense would go haywire. What do you think was her real motive for killing him because it was very well planned. You know, there's this old cliche, and so I'm not going to take ownership of it. But if you can't, if she couldn't have them, have him, nobody else would. And so, she wanted him. He didn't want to be with her, and he, and he didn't want to marry her either. I mean, that was one That's of the other. That's the things. big blow. After right. all those months of crazy, freaky sex, he did not want to marry her. He wanted to date other people. Right. I always thought it was because she tried to convince him during this all-day sex marathon for him not to go on that Cancun trip with the other woman. That could be part of it, but to me the bigger one is that he wouldn't marry her. And uh, if you're not going to so marry me, had to die. that was enough for her, right? With us tonight, the man you've all wanted to speak to, Juan Martinez is joining us. He tried that case so low, a death penalty trial. And tonight is the eve before his book hits the stands, Conviction, the untold story of putting Jody Arias behind bars. You know, that just kills me, that question you ask. So you don't know if you killed him, right? And you said that with totally a straight face. What were you getting at? She was, uh, just to show that uh, even the things that she should admit she was going to deny. Uh, she wasn't going to give anybody a straight answer, even as to something that she should admit. There was no doubt that, that she had killed him. She was claiming self-defense, yet she was saying that she wasn't sure he was dead. What did you ever make of Jody Arias's fog? Remember, this was, I'll never forget it till the day I die. She was describing after she murders Travis Alexander and she goes on this debacle through the desert and she says at some point she looks down and her hands, you know, she's got to see her hands and blood under her fingernails. And she says she still doesn't realize what happened. And she suddenly snaps to when she gets to her next boyfriend, Ryan Burns, and physically mounts him, actually jumps on him. What did you make of the fog? That... Um it was a lie, obviously. That's something that she's made up. Um, whenever anything was asked of her that uh, was problematic, I always resorted to something, have a problem with my mind, or maybe it's the fog. Um, or maybe it's your fault because you're yelling at her. Right. You know, or you either. took a lot of heat for raising your voice. I did, but uh, it wasn't going to be her court jester. That, I never understood that. I like the way you said that. You were not going to be her court jester. I couldn't understand why everyone was so distraught that you were raising your voice at a woman that committed a heinous, cold-blooded murder that she had planned for days. So you've got the memory loss. One thing that always astounded me is that maybe they couldn't stop her, her defense. Painting or trying to paint Travis Alexander as a pedophile. Listen. I walked in and Travis was on the bed masturbating. And I got really embarrassed. Um, even though we'd been intimate like more times than I could count, it was just kind of awkward walking in on, on him like that. And um, I was headed toward the dresser, but then I stopped and I was trying to think of something funny or witty to say, like, uh, do you still need my help or something? And um, he started grabbing at something on the bed and I realized they were papers and um, as he was grabbing the papers, one, one kind of went sailing off the bed and it fell and that 
chaotic pattern that paper falls and it, it landed face up near my feet and it was a photograph. Um, what was in the photograph? What was the photograph of? It was a picture of a little boy. Could you guess how old first the little boy was? Oh, five. You know what? That, that almost turns my stomach. Did you see that dramatic pause? It was a picture of, and like they had to right. pry it out of right. her. You know that was all a big lie. That was not true. I don't believe for one minute Travis Alexander was a pedophile. And well, it just happened to float down and what, land on her big toe? In a chaotic pattern, it, it floated down. Um, yeah, it floated it, it, down. It, Right. It fluttered down and landed by her foot. And in her journal, she indicated that nothing whatsoever happened on that particular day that she claims that uh, he was masturbating. I remember that. So Two pictures of little boys. And another thing, Juan, think what woman in her right mind would come in on a man, her love, her true love, and you find out he's aroused by photos of little boys. What woman would stay in that relationship? It doesn't make any sense. Well, she wanted to, I guess, paint herself as somewhat of a saint that needed to be canonized uh, because she did offer herself sexually afterwards. Question. You do know that Jody Arias compares herself to Einstein, right? I've, you know I've that. heard that from her parents, and yes. And what do you make of Jody Arias comparing her intellect to Albert Einstein? Maybe I should sit down and talk to her about the theory of relativity. What, do you think she would ever sit down and talk to you? No, and I wouldn't want to sit down yeah, and talk to her. Yeah, why would you? Can I ask you something? I've wondered. I want to hear about how the impact of your strategy affected this trial. We're trying to get inside your mind. The, um, initially, there was a lot of criticism of uh, the fact that I was somewhat strident and that I w was asking her yes or no, those sorts of things. But um, as it wore on and people were able to see that she was trying to cover up, then uh, the strategy began to bear fruit. Um, I know that if I had been uh, someone who was soft on her, she would have just had me walking through that courtroom like a dog on a leash and uh, throwing little tidbits at me to pick up on. And she would have just told her story without me having my questions answered, which is what I was there for. I wanted her to tell me what, uh, what actually happened, not her story. Two times you have described as we sit here tonight, how she could have single-handedly turned the tide of this trial if it had not been for your trial strategy. A, you said, I would not be her court jester. And two, I did not want to be led around the courtroom by a leash that she was yanking. And if you had not had that strategy, that is exactly what would have happened. I mean, look at Travis. He let her in that day. And I'm not really sure that uh, he even knew that she was going to show up. The way she described it, she came into the door and then was just standing there looking at him. It appeared that he was unaware that she was even going to visit. With me, Juan Martinez. This hits the book stands in the morning. I got to read it ahead of time. I feel guilty about it. I got to read it before you. Conviction, the untold story of putting Jody Arias behind bars where she belongs. I added that.